Welcome to ACE Your On-Campus Interview, brought to you by the ABA's Law Student Division, Section of Litigation, and Legal Career Central. ABA membership is free for law students. The Law Student Division offers premium benefits, which includes access and savings for Quimby.com, discounts on bar review programs, up to $50 off West Academic Casebooks, and a legal ethics bundle that includes a free model rules of professional conduct ebook, upgrade to pre premium for only $25. The section of litigation provides student opportunities to network with experienced litigators and resources like quick sound advice podcasts and telephone roundtable discussions, perfect for busy law students. Section membership is also free for law students. Join today. ABA Legal Career Central is a career center that offers both career development resources and a job board for law students, lawyers, and other legal professionals across all disciplines and career stages. Today, we're delighted to have lawyers from both sides of the interview table on hand to share their advice on the interview process and how to land the call back. Simone Salim, founder of some Simone Salim Coaching in San Francisco, unfortunately had to be called away. So we're going to be doing this program just with Tiffany and Daniel. So Tiffany joins us. Tiffany Degree is a partner with Brad, Bradley Birmingham, Bradley, excuse me, in Birmingham, Alabama. And Daniel Kazan is an associate with Gray Robinson, PA in Orlando, Florida. Tiffany, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we start this program? Sure, I'm happy to join. Thank you so much for including me in the program. So my name is Tiffany Degree. I'm a partner at Bradley and I live in Birmingham and our firm has about nine offices throughout the Southeast, spanning from Washington, D.C. to Texas, Florida, etc. So um, I'm a litigator here. I do commercial large stake business litigation throughout the country, really. And have been here for about 10 years. I went to Alabama for law school and went through the OCI process. So I know what you guys are, are thinking and going through, although it was a while ago. Um, since at the firm, I've served on our recruiting committee who makes the decisions obviously about hiring and have participated in many OCI interviews at different schools. I'm involved in the ABA. I think the ABA is wonderful and I'm happy you guys are getting involved so early. I mostly do work now with the section of litigation with the Women Advocate Committee, which is great. So dial into that, you know, eventually when you guys are ready. But I'm happy to, to be here today and we're looking forward to discussing this issue. Great. Danny, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Danny Cavanaugh. I live in Orlando, Florida. I also went to law school here in Florida at a place called Stetson University. Uh, I work for Greg Robinson. I do commercial litigation, and I've been doing that for about two years. Um, so I'm a sort of a recent graduate. Um, I went through the OCI process, uh, did several interviews, and Greg Robinson is, is one of the firm's that uh, I interviewed with in the OCI process. Prior to, going law school, prior to going to law school, I was in the Army for about 15 years, and I also spent about 10 years as a law enforcement officer uh, before going back to school uh, for law. Great. Thanks a lot, you guys. You're going to have, you're going to provide a great perspective to these um, to these students are going to be interviewing in the next couple of weeks. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to, we're going to be covering prepper, prepping for the OCI, the actual interview, the callback, and then what you can do post OCI. So let's go ahead and get started with, with um, prepping. So Danny, can you uh, tell us a little bit about you know what you recommend in regards to prepping for the OCI? Sure. So. You know, uh, each school has uh, their own individual process or, or program. Uh, so I'm just gonna be speaking generally, uh, but I will say that, you know, the, the first thing I did when the OCI list came out is kind of, I compared uh, the list of firms who were going to be coming to campus um, with the list of firms that I was interested in looking for uh, an opening. And so for the firms that weren't going to be coming to campus or we're going to be at campus at a time that I couldn't interview or go through the process with them. Uh, I 
you know, applied outside of the OCI process to those firms. Uh, I've I've heard from other students that sometimes you know that comes to them as an afterthought or they wait too late and sometimes you know maybe miss out on an opportunity to get an interview that they could have had had they just applied earlier. So I definitely suggest making sure that the firms that you have an interest in are going to be there and if not you know make an alternative arrangement um, to get your resume in front of them outside of the OCI process. Uh, my school also had. Uh, a really good career services department that scheduled uh, mock interviews for any of the students who were willing uh, and able to come to campus and basically just uh, do an interview with one or two of the career services staff. Um, for me, kind of helped me work out uh, some jitters and, you know, they're able to give me uh, personal and specific tips on, you know, maybe spend more time talking about, uh, you know, this area of interest and, uh, you know, things of that nature. I also did uh, some mock interviews with uh, some of the student organizations on campus would bring in alumni um, to do mock interviews. Uh, and for me, you know, I, I came from a military background, a law enforcement background, and interviewing in those fields is to me seems like a complete 180 to the type of interview uh, that's conducted in the legal field and so for me going through those mock interviews um, before you know game day if you will uh, was super beneficial because uh, it gave me a chance to kind of work out the kinks that i had and make the changes that i needed to make uh, to be successful um, and so as far as preparing for OCI, I think that kind of, those are the tips that I would give out. And I, I think Tiffany is going to speak about uh, researching maybe before the OCI process starts. Yeah, so my main tips for preparing for an OCI interview are really divided into two categories. One is, is really focusing on yourself, what you can do to make sure you are in the best position when you walk in the room. And the second is focusing on the employer. So going back to focusing on yourself, you obviously wanna make sure that your um, packet, that your resume looks good. If you do a cover letter, I know not every firm wants that. If you do that, make sure it includes something that is not on your resume, so it doesn't seem just super duplicative. But I would say on the CV, one thing I really like to see is a section at the bottom that says, you know, interests or something interesting about you. So when I come and do an OCI interview, I'm thinking like, I don't know this person. I'm going to have to spend 15 or 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is, trying to make conversation with them. And so if you give me something on your resume that's helpful, for instance, like Danny just said, his background in law enforcement, that's a super interesting topic I'd love to ask him about. But if you also say maybe I'm interested in travel or studied abroad in Mexico, like any of that stuff is helpful to me as the employer. So it puts me at ease before you even get there to think like, okay, even if this person is hard to talk to, like at least I've got a few subjects. So I'd add that, um, or at least consider adding that. Make sure on your resume, your email address is professional. Just use your law school one, I think. A lot, some people use like old Yahoo addresses with like weird names, which is never a good idea. Make sure your cell phone number is on, the, on your resume and that your mailbox is not full. We have had, we have called people back to tell them they get a call back and you get that mailbox is full, which does not leave a good impression. Um, I would say check your social media. One thing that our recruiting coordinator at the firm does is when she gets the list, she will check social media and see if there's anything out there. And one time we had a candidate who had a very inappropriate picture on his, as his profile picture, for Facebook. I mean, it was incredibly inappropriate. And so make sure you've cleaned off some of that stuff. You don't need to go through every Facebook picture and untag yourself if you're, you know, in college or whatever, but do make sure you're putting yourself forward as best you can and know that employers will check some of that stuff on the front end. And the second thing I would say to prepare is really to focus on the employer. So talk to upperclassmen. If you're interested in the law firm, maybe talk to other people who have clerked there before. That would be very, very helpful to try to see, is this somewhere you even want to go that you want to drop for? Um, is this somewhere, you know, maybe you can find out some intel about what they do that will be helpful in the interview. And obviously just do your research. So 
look at their website, look at LinkedIn. Maybe there's some, just Google, Google them and see if there's some recent press releases that would be helpful. One thing that, you know, our law firm does pretty much everything from a civil law perspective. We, you know, do corporate law, mergers and acquisitions. We do litigation, white collar crime, all this stuff. We do not do, other than the pro bono the work that we do, we don't do criminal law. We don't do divorce type work. And so I have had people in interviews before at OCI say, I've always wanted to be a criminal lawyer. And it's very confusing as to why they dropped with my firm. So make sure you've looked at the website and you know the practice groups through the law firm. If possible, research the lawyers. I think often you guys don't know the actual lawyers that will be interviewing, just depending on the school. So, you know, if, if you do know, obviously you should look at their bio page and figure out what kind of law they practice. And then my other tip is geographic location. So when you're deciding where you might want to interview with, you should keep your mind open really to other areas of the country that you might not have considered. But if you do pick one of those areas, know that the employers are going to be trying to figure out if you're really interested in Arizona or if you just want to come to Arizona for the summer, for instance. So I'm from Florida. I worked at an Alabama firm. I now am a partner at the same Alabama firm. So it's not that you can't come to a different geographic location, but you need to have, you need to have a story um, that's believable. It doesn't have to be a serious one. Just, you know, I'm really interested in, in Birmingham. I've heard great things about it and I, I would love to kind of come here for a summer and get involved. I had one person one time that took it to an extreme and clearly had like Googled top things to do in Birmingham. And so he said like, I'm interested in Birmingham. I really want to go to the so-and-so museum. I want to go see the Vulcan statute. I mean, it was like things that people that live in Birmingham do not do often. And so it was not well received. So do not take that overboard. I think it needs to be a genuine connection or at least desire to learn about that region. So those are my tips for prepping for OCI. Great. No, those are really valuable tips. Um, so now that you have actually prepped for OCI, what are your tips or any advice for the actual interview? Danny, can you take can you start us off here? Hey Danny, are you on mute? Yeah, sorry, here I am. Um I, I I remember, you know, the week or two weeks of, of OCI uh vividly, just because, you know, it's a it's a school has has just been school just started or will be starting in a couple of weeks um you know it, it's exciting and sort of nerve-wracking at the same time to have these interviews coming up and and so for me uh making sure to practice mindfulness um before each interview and, and really sort of at the each beginning of each day that i had an interview scheduled uh was important uh because you know you don't want to go into the interview like a nervous wreck. Um, I, I know that uh, from the other side of the table, um, you know, attorneys certainly are, I would assume most of them are understanding that, you know, being a little bit nervous is, is typical. Um, but so for me, mindfulness was just kind of concentrating on my breathing. Um, before interviews, uh, we did the interviews um, on campus in our library, uh, you know, which has different individual rooms that people can break off into. So I would get to the library probably about a, a half hour before I had any interviews just to kind of decompress and relax and make sure that, you know, I wasn't rushing from the parking lot after trying to find a space uh, and running into the interview sweating. Um, so, you know, getting there early, and just kind of chilling out uh, would, would be my best advice because, uh, you know, you, you want to go into each interview with energy and enthusiasm. And I know, you know, the, the more interviews that you do, and especially if you've done a lot of preparation time, it can kind of start to get rote. And, you know, you just you, you go into these rooms and answer the questions you're asked and, and move out and, and maybe sometimes you're so nervous <laughs> that you're you don't get a chance to let your personality um show through i think for me the the flip or the switch was kind of flipped when i had an interview with a firm who i had applied to 
but did not select me uh, for one of their interviews on campus uh, for OCI. But uh, it just so happened that they were on campus and uh, had time, and I had gotten to the library early. So the career services individual that was there that day um, just kind of linked it up for me to go in and talk to them, um, knowing that uh, you know I was most likely not going to get an offer for them because they hadn't even put me on their list to interview. Uh, but because I went into that interview uh, without any expectations, it was a lot easier for me to kind of calm down and just kind of have a conversation with the people on the other side of the table. And it turns out that that was, I felt the most comfortable in that interview just because I, I didn't feel like there was anything, you know, on the line that I could mess up. Um, and so all of my interviews after that experience went, I think, a little smoother uh, for me uh, because I was able to be a little bit more relaxed and in the moment when I was uh, talking to the panelists. And I, I think uh, Tiffany, uh, is, are you able to speak to a little bit about the professionalism that the students should have in the room? Absolutely. So obviously, we all know it's very important to be professional in these settings. First, I would I would say dress code wise, you need to be wearing a full suit with the jacket, with the tie. If you're a guy, it needs to be like as appropriate as you would think you would wear if you were going to argue something in front of federal court. Even if you think this is a firm that day to day, they don't dress that professionally, you need to dress that formally for the interview. And so be sure you have a jacket. Um, if you don't have one, borrow one, borrow a suit from a friend. It's not like you have to, you know, have this whole wardrobe, but you do need you, one professional suit. And I would say dark colored, you want to go very conservative so that you don't chance kind of offending anybody by wearing something slightly crazy or, you know, women, nothing low cut, just very, very, very conservative. Um, professionalism also, I think you want to really work on your handshake, especially if you have not, like for me, I went straight from college to law school. And so I had never worked in a professional environment. I didn't have a ton of like handshake experience. So I think you do want to be sure you have a decent handshake. And so practice that with a friend or your career services person. And sometimes people have a very, very weak handshake and it really sends the wrong signal at the beginning. So I would take the effort to make sure that you have a decent handshake. I would make sure you can maintain eye contact during the interview. You know, you want to come across like, obviously we know that you guys are uncomfortable. We are uncomfortable and we remember what it was like to be uncomfortable. So no one's going to hold that against you, but you do need to try to have, have and keep eye contact. Um, I really liked what Danny was saying about trying to relax because at the end of the day, this is a conversation. You don't want to be too relaxed, obviously. I had a guy one time who cussed several times in the interview, which it was it was inappropriate in that setting. Might have been fine if he worked at the firm and we had been friends, went to lunch, whatever. No problem with that. But in an interview setting, you should not be cussing. You know, you should make sure you maintain that professionalism and be careful that you're not sort of too relaxed. But at the end of the day, it is a conversation. One thing that surprised me was I thought I was gonna come in the room and there would be a lot of questions like, if you were a fruit, what fruit would you like to be? Like these, these interview questions that you Google and you see online. For me, my experience in OCI was that it was, an, it was just a conversation. And really you were as responsible for keeping that conversation going as the other person. So you need to come in with some questions. For instance, the way that I, I usually start off an OCI interview is to say, tell me about yourself. And sometimes people, have no idea how to respond to that because they were not expecting a general question like that. So make sure you have a good story and you can say, here's who, where, you know, where, who's a, here's who I am. I'm from this place. Here's what I did in undergrad. Here's what I'm really passionate about. I'm in law school now. I'm, you know, I think I'm interested in this kind of law, that kind of stuff. You need, a, you need a little bit of a story about yourself in case you get that opportunity. And, you know, there's really no way Small talk is a hard thing. It's not my favorite thing to do. I do not prefer doing that. Unlike a party where you can kind of say, thanks so much for talking with me. It's been so nice to meet you. I'm going to go grab a drink or I'm going to go say hi to my friend who just walked in and sort of make an excuse to leave. In this setting, 
you really can't. So you have to be able to fill the time slot that's allotted to you. So come with some questions. They can be very basic. They can be, tell me what brought you to your law firm. What kind of law do you practice? How did you get interested in that kind of law? That kind of stuff. People generally like to talk about themselves. And I think the statistics and some of the surveys have shown that the more the interviewer talks during the interview, the more positive feeling they have about that interview. So to the extent that you can get them talking, that's a good thing as well. The other thing I would say is, you know, after the interview's over, consider sending some sort of thank you note. A lot of people, I don't think it's necessary, but I do think it's appreciated, at least where I live in the South. Um, one issue I've run into, though, is people will send like, uh, an <coughs> sorry, <laughs> people will send a thank you in the mail. And what I typically do is on the way back to the office, I'm calling my recruiting partner and saying, you know, here are the three people I want to bring back or whatever for on for in office interviews. So if you send me a letter in the mail, it's not really going to be effective for me because I will have already made the decision about who I want to bring back to the firm. So consider a thank you email, something that's short and sweet and, you know, potentially has some piece of information that we discussed in the interview. So it's memorable. You might consider when you, like, like Danny said, these will run together. So you might want to consider when you leave the room, go send yourself an email or jot down a note of like something that was remarkable about that conversation that you could try to weave into a thank you note. Um, I think that's all my tips for the OCI process itself. All right, so we've prepped for the interview, we've had the actual interview, and we got the call back. Now what? Tiffany, do you have any thoughts on that? Sure, so first how it works, and obviously it's different at a lot of firms, is you will be put in communication with somebody who's going to be planning logistics who will tell you like where to be and where to go. At my firm, the way it works is that you will have individual interviews with several attorneys, you know, maybe five, um, and then usually we'll take you to lunch or dinner. So I would just get an idea on the front end what it looks like at that firm. So you can expect, am I going to go to dinner with these people or is this just going to be like a one room and there's multiple people in there? So see if you can feel that out on the front end. My main tip is to have a lot of questions. Um, one thing that people often forget when I is, like I said, again, it's a conversation. The way our callbacks are scheduled for 30 minutes. So you would come in my office for 30 minutes and we've got to fill that time. And so I want you to have questions for me. Ask me about the summer program. Ask me about my career. What brought me to Bradley? Um, what was surprising to me? you know, as a new lawyer that I wasn't expecting in law school. Um, all these kind of questions. Tell me about being a litigator. What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, and you obviously need to be weaving in. Well, I, that sounds great because I'm really interested in this as well. Or, you know, I get a lot of questions about the firms. I'm the head of the firm's um, women's initiative. So you can ask questions like that or questions about pro bono. Like what kind of pro bono efforts does the firm have? You can ask questions that, appear to be more forward looking. So like I want I want I'm interested in the associates here. What's the day to day like for a first year associate or something like that? How are your associates evaluated? Something where it seems like you're not just looking for a summer job, but you're looking a little bit more long term. So have a lot of questions is my number one. Um, again, you need to wear a suit. I think all the time, no matter what kind of environment you're in with maybe the exception of if you're going to interview at some like startup type law firm that you know you feel out of place. But other than that, you should definitely wear a suit. A lot of people bring those those notebooks that are almost like leather bound or have it's like a folder that's made out of like leather or a notepad so that they can ask questions. A lot of people bring copies of your resume. I think that's a good thing to have, even though you will likely, you know, not pass them out a lot because a lot of people already have a copy of your resume. But uh, one thing I would say is turn your phone off. Um, if you have one of those Apple watches or a smartwatch, do not wear it. Um, if you have a regular watch and you just think it because you're nervous, you might be looking at your watch, don't wear it. Um, you don't need to be doing anything that implies you're ready to go, you're tired of talking to me, 
you're distracted by a text on your phone or your watch. So make sure just to leave all that stuff at home. Um, and then, <coughs> sorry, my last thing I would say was keep everything positive. So sometimes people ask you, where else are you interviewing? You should tell them, in my opinion, you should not be weird or cagey about that. Um, and if you maybe think not so highly of a firm or not so highly of something you did in your past that's on your resume, I just wouldn't complain about it. I, mean, I don't think it's the place to say anything negative. You want to just say, it was, you know, I loved working there. It was a great experience. It just wasn't for me, you know, long term or something like that. So make sure you kind of keep it on the positive note. Danny? Yeah, so I went on a, a, you know, hand, a couple of callbacks at different firms. And so uh, by and large, the, the prior to your callback day, uh, the firm will send you hopefully a list of kind of an itinerary for what you're gonna be doing throughout the day and the specific people uh, that you're going to be meeting with for those uh, interviews, which you know are somewhere between 15 minutes and a half an hour normally. Um, I definitely suggest just like on the front end, as Tiffany suggested, researching the firms, um, researching the individuals that you'll be meeting with at the firm, not like, you know, stalker level, but just maybe taking a look at their bio on the firm website, um, seeing what kind of law they practice. Uh, typically, the bios will have a, a little bit of um, background, you know, where they went to school, where they're from, so on and so forth. Um, and sometimes, you know, their cases, uh, interesting cases that they've been involved in or publications. And so um, it, 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 I think it's really beneficial to do that kind of research on the front end before your call back and, and find areas uh, where maybe you have a similar background or a similar interest or questions about something uh, that that person is interested in or passionate about. Uh, because as Tiffany said, sometimes filling those 15 minutes or, or 30 minutes can can be a little difficult. And so hopefully doing that research on the front end uh, is helpful. Um, at, at, at firms, sometimes the callback interview will involve um, being in the office throughout the day and then a happy hour and or a dinner. Um, you know, obviously you, you either, you know, it's fine if you don't drink, if, if you do drink and it's offered, uh, make, make, understand that even if you're at a happy hour or you're out to dinner, um, it's, it's still a professional interview. So I would, you know, consider yourself still in a professional environment, um, even though you're not sitting inside of someone's office. Um, and so I, I know, I know now that, um, I, I've been at the firm for a little while that sometimes those happy hours or, or those dinners can go downhill fast. Um, if somebody gets a little too comfortable, um throughout the interview and kind of like tiffany said earlier you want to be comfortable you want to have a conversation you want to get to know folks and give them a chance uh, to get to know you but uh, you know you don't want to get too comfortable because it, it's still a professional interview in a professional environment um i would say it, it, certainly you want to be respectful of people's time uh you want to be eager uh, but you, and so you want to be early uh, for your callback interviews, but you don't want to be too early. So, like I would, I would say a half hour is too early. Twenty minutes is too early. I think ideally anywhere between five to ten minutes early uh, kind of sends the message that you're eager and respectful um, of other folks' time. I know that uh, when when folks get to our office uh, thirty minutes early, um, our our receptionist is calling around trying to figure out what to do with that person because uh you know as a firm we want to be hospitable and and not let an applicant sit out in the lobby by themselves uh for a half hour once they've announced themselves uh but a lot of times you know uh, attorneys have other schedules that they have to meet so uh, personally what i would do is I would, if I if I hadn't been to the office building where I was going to be doing my callbacks, or even if I had, sometimes I, I would just get to the area early, um, 
you know, about 30 minutes or maybe even, you know, the building and just sit in the building's general lobby uh, until it was kind of time to go announce myself and then make my way up the elevator or down the hall to wherever um, to do that formally. Um, and I, I, I think that that's I, And also, I, if you're in a, a new town or um, you're interviewing at a firm that's maybe in a, a location that you're not familiar with, going to that um, area, if you have the opportunity before your interview uh, might be helpful. I, I know for me, just, you know, being somewhere and seeing it one time, uh, it takes away any anxiety I have or some of the anxiety I might have if, okay, I got to drive to this new town or new firm an hour away. So not only do I have to figure out how to get to a place I've never been before, but it's going to be followed by a full day of interviews. Um, to me, I would rather just maybe go out there and have dinner just so I know where the office is. So at least I've done one thing um, before the day of the interview that I don't have to worry about. Well, great. Uh, those are really, really, really good comments and tips. You know, so you've you've gone through, you've prepped, you've had the actual interview, you had a successful callback, and then you get the offer. What do you do? What's next? So, this is Tiffany. I'll I'll start us off. The way that it typically works, at least at my firm, is you know you obviously won't hear that day. So, we have after you walk out of my office, I get an email, an automated email, kind of survey that I fill out that goes to my recruiting committee that says, you know, do I like you? All that kind of stuff. Like, was it a good interview? Do I think you'd be a good fit? Blah, blah, blah. So I fill that out. Then it goes to the recruiting committee who generally takes a week or so. I mean, our group meets every Wednesday. So if you happen to come on a Thursday, you're not going to, we're not even going to talk about you till the following Wednesday. So the first thing I would say is if there's some pressure, that time pressure that you are under from another firm, because you may be doing this at multiple firms at once, you need to let us know because we don't want to miss out on an applicant who feels like, man, they'd rather work at Bradley, but this other offer is going to expire on Friday. So they're just going to go ahead and take that offer. You should pick up the phone and call me or our recruiting coordinator and say, hey, I know y'all haven't had a chance to process my application and make a decision yet, but I just need to kind of fill you in. I'm on this tight deadline of this other firm who is really, you know, they want to stick to that deadline and they need an answer from me by this date. I just wanted to let you know that um, in case there was some way I could get a decision from you guys beforehand. And we do that all the time. Then it might just be an email amongst the recruiting members saying, okay, here's this person's resume. Here are the recruiting reviews. Yes or no. So we can get you an answer faster. So don't, don't let yourself think you're in a time pressure that you might not really be in if you let all firms involved kind of know what was going on. And we're not offended that you're applying in other places. I think that's just understood. Um, if you have multiple offers, so if, if you get an offer from us, but now you've also got an offer from another person, I just think communication is the best. And I, I don't think you need to tell them that you have another offer necessarily, but I do think you need to kindly, you know, thank them a lot for the opportunity and say, you know, what is your time frame as far as when do I need to get back to you so that you know, yes or no, if I'm going to be able to spend the summer with you guys. So make sure you ask the time frames and be respectful of whatever the firm says. There's some firms that are very stickler about the time frame and they really need you to get back to them by that date or your offer is gone. So they can make room for other people or there's some places, you know, that are less sensitive to the time frame, but you should be sure you're asking those questions. I would say, <coughs> man, sorry. Um, if you decide not to take the offer, always leave on good terms. So I did something that I should not have done when I was at y'all stage. I interviewed at a firm. I decided I didn't want the, the offer and I hadn't gotten it yet. I just decided I'd rather work at this other firm where I already have the offer. So I called this other firm to say that, you know, I was kind of taking my name out of consideration and I was terrified to call. And when I called, I got the guy's voicemail and I thought, yes. And so I left the message and I said, you know, hey, thank you so much for the interview. You know, unfortunately, I've taken another opportunity. I'm going to take my name out of the hat, which was fine. I just think it was, in retrospect, being the employer now, I think it was unprofessional. I think I would have, I should have said on the message, hey, can you call me when you can? And then had that conversation in person because you never know down the line when you're going to need to knock on their door again or you're going to see them in a case or something and you want to just have left 
a very good professional um, taste in their mouth about you. I think um, just be be very grateful for the interview. Even if you don't get the offer, if you do get the offer and you decide to accept the offer, obviously thank them. I would just ask them at that point who the logistical person will be for you to ask logistical questions. A lot of times the hiring partner will call you to tell you that you've gotten the offer. And if you start asking them a lot of detail oriented questions about what day you start and where to park and all this stuff, it's just kind of annoying. So like, but more than that, I would say, just ask them, you know, in the future, as I have questions gearing up to the summer, who's the person in your office that I can contact with those questions so that you're not asking kind of the wrong person. Um, and then the way our office does it is if you don't get an offer, you'll get a letter in the mail, you know, that says, thank you for interviewing. You know, unfortunately we don't have a spot this summer, but try back again. So that's how the process works, at least at my firm. Great. Thank you. You know, um, we're going to be wrapping up shortly, but before we go into the live Q and A, do you guys have any last minute, advice, you know, any best advice that you've ever heard or what you really wish you had known going into the OCI process? This is Tiffany. I can kick us off. Um, so from my perspective, I really thought when I was starting law school that I wanted to do criminal law. I had a background in criminology. Um, I had worked at the DA's office in undergrad. Anyway, so I was somewhat narrow-minded in the OCI process and I'm glad that I was able to kind of get over that, listen to folks in career services that know what they're doing, listen to other classmates that know what they're doing, who encouraged me to apply. So I think my best advice is really just to be open-minded. You might not think you're interested in Nashville living there until you, you know, interview and start looking at it and think like, oh, I really think I could look, love to work at this firm in Nashville. And so I would also say when you come to the firms, just be very observant. So what is the culture like? It's nothing that you can really ask necessarily. It's just something you have to see. So look around. Are there people you think you could be friends with? Is this an environment that you think would fit your personality? Are there good clients around? Does it appear that people have sufficient work? You know, what are they having to do to get clients in the door? Um, is the work day to day something you think you would enjoy or could learn to enjoy? Um, does the values of the organization seem to fit your values? And if you ask certain questions that align with your values, do you get good answers or answers that feel kind of forced? So I would say just be observant. I think you can learn a lot about a place by kind of looking at what's going on and then talking to others, of course, who might have other experience with the firm. Uh. This is Danny. Yeah, that, that was really good advice. I, I don't have um, really too much to add uh, except to say, you know, make sure that you take some time before the OCI process starts and before any callbacks um, just to think about and remember, you know, the hard work that you've done uh, to get to where you are um, and remember that these are, these are just conversations uh, that you're having with folks. They're interviewing you. But you're also interviewing them, and I, I think Tiffany brought up great points about being observant and asking pointed questions uh, to make sure that the firm that you're interviewing with is a good fit for you, um, just as they're, inter they're looking to see if you're going to be a good fit uh, for them. I know a, a lot of colleagues that I graduated with uh, from law school uh, well, not a lot, but maybe some of them found themselves um, at firms that they uh, eventually, um, sometimes sooner rather than later, became um, a little disenchanted or unhappy with. And I think had they maybe asked the questions or been a little more observant on the front end, um, they would have been able to make a different choice that maybe would have found themselves um, happier at a, at a different firm. Um, and Tiffany, in case you were wondering if, if I could be any fruit, I think I'd be a tangerine. That's a good, that's a random one. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right, we've, we've got a number of questions in here, so we have time to take a few of them. So let's see here. Um, Tiffany, 
earlier you talked a little bit about um, small talk and you know the need the need to be able to do so. We have a question here um, about that. How do you end small talk without it being awkward? Do either of you guys have any tips for this? The best way I found to do it is sorry. The best way I found to do it is well, one, like I said, you really can't do it in an interview, so you better figure out how to continue the conversation. But if it's like a party or a networking event. I think you can, one thing is you could pull another person in. Like if you see a friend who's standing close to you, you could say, oh, have you met Danny? And then that's a little place, good place for you to exit and say, thanks for talking or whatever. Another thing is just, of course, to say, it's been so great to meet you. I'm going to go run, grab a drink, or I'm going to go say hi to my friend who just walked in. That's kind of the best way I think can think of to do it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, and uh, I could certainly be wrong, but I think sometimes there is no unawkward way uh, to end a conversation, especially when it's small talk. Um, I will say, uh, I, I think I might have done this in one OCI interview or two, um, is, you know, kind of uh, make your excusal more about uh, being respectful of their time than of you know, you being ready to go. So if, if you feel the need, um, you know, maybe saying something like, uh, listen, I, I know you have under, other interviews uh, today, or I know you've already done a lot of interviews, so I'm going to let you uh, get back to it and prep for your next one or give you a little break um, to relax for a couple of minutes. Um, you know, saying something like that might be um make things less awkward if you feel the need you, you gotta kind of break contact um before an interview is exactly over or just uh, in my experience uh for the most part even though interviewing in and of itself is sort of an awkward process um the typically the the conversations in the interview just kind of dovetailed to a, a natural point where i think everybody was just sort of um it just kind of naturally dovetailed to the end and everybody was sort of on the same page um i i didn't have uh well except for maybe one or two any interviews um that i felt went on too long okay great we have a number of questions about regarding grades and not being in the top 10 percent or having a lower GPA. Do grades come up often in the interview? If so, you know, how would you address a lower grade or not being in the top 10 percent? I think that, you know, by and large, uh, before your uh, OCI interview, uh, you know, they've, they've most likely got your resume and reviewed it. Um, that probably has uh, your GPA, if not your class ranking on there. Um, I, I think if, if having a lower GPA or not being at a certain class ranking is a, something that you're concerned about, um, just I, I would suggest making sure you come up with uh, ways to address that if the question is asked, whether it be, um, Oh, okay, my yes, since you asked, my GPA is a little bit lower than I'd like. However, I was very involved with, you know, a X, Y, or Z organization on campus, or, you know, I, I've been uh, clerking at a firm during the school year. Um, you know, obviously, obviously you, you want to be honest, uh, but I would suggest just kind of finding um, what your strengths are or um, you know a, a way that you can explain why uh, your class ranking or your GPA might be lower um, that still you know shows that you have value in other areas. I totally agree. I think one. I mean, there's some firms that have very strict grade requirements. And if they're inter still interviewing you, there's there's maybe a chance they can make an exception, or maybe the requirement is you have to be in that range after you graduate, you know, so maybe you have a little time to like improve your grade. So, <clears throat> but also there's a lot of firms that are doing the interviewing who maybe don't have such strict criteria. So one, I wouldn't go in in like a shameful way thinking, oh man, like this is a terrible percentage or class 
whatever ranking. So I think like you project a lot of times what people see. So totally agree with Danny. Figure out what else you can sell. I mean, one, like if if you think the grade is an isolated situation, like you booked every class one semester, just had a really terrible grade in one, you know, you might say that and say that you're working on ways to, you know, you've now figured out kind of how the law school grading goes and the exams and like you've got a better plan in the future. But that also like maybe you bring to the table, you know, something from your prior education or background or your you know, oral skills or some interest you've got that you can kind of sell. But um, I think mostly it's just the whole interview is about, I mean, grades are very important to certain firms, but also it's important that you are, you know, a normal person who I can go get coffee with and I can introduce to my client and take to a hearing and not have to worry about the interaction. So the way you put yourself in the interview is really very important as well as grades. So I wouldn't focus too much on the grades. Great. You know, I think we have time for one more question here. And you guys talked a little bit about, you know, having questions and being prepared. Um, Tiffany, is there like one great question that, that stood out to you that someone, someone asked during an interview or impressed you? Somebody asked me recently, I thought it was a good question, what, um, what advice I would have for myself when I was there at their stage? Like, what surprised me that's different now that I didn't know then? Basically, like, if I could go back and talk to myself as a 1L, what would I tell myself? And that was a little, it's a different question. I don't get it often, but I thought it was a good question. It made me kind of pause and say, you know, I think I would, you know, I don't remember what my response was, but it was interesting. But I think, I think the best, you need just the go-to questions of what brought you to Bradley, you know, tell me about your practice, blah, blah, blah. But I thought that one recently was interesting. Great. Thank you so I, much, I think, everyone. Oh, Danny, you have something to add? Sorry. Yeah, I would just uh, real quick to piggyback off of that. Uh, you know, I, I think asking uh, what qualities or what skills um, were helped other uh, or previous summer associates uh, be successful or, you know, what things, um, you know, their summer associates uh, that were not successful um, did so you can kind of stay away from those type of, of activities are, are good questions. They're kind of, they're forward thinking on the one hand, and then they're also, you know, the answers uh, could be very beneficial um, to looking forward to, you know, having a good summer when you get there and making sure, you know, not to step in, in any potholes and hopefully learning from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make them. Great. Well, thank you, Danny and Tiffany, for sharing your advice. And thank you all for joining us today. We wish you success during your OCI experience and encourage you to take advantage of all that the ABA has to offer. Take care.